Hi there, Chris here with another quick tip for you all. In this video, we're gonna take a look at using airbrush primers. And so for the examples we have here today are the Vallejo surface primers in a white, black, and a light gray. Light gray being the one that I prefer to use a lot of times when priming models. Uh, just a personal preference as it's not quite as bright as the white, but if you're gonna go with really bright colors, then you might as well stay with a white primer. If you're going for a really contrasty kind of look or you're staying with dark colors, you want to go with the black primer. And of course the light gray uh, is middle of the road and black covers on top of it and bright colors will sit on top of it and you know, it's kind of a have your cake and eat it too kind of thing. There are other surface primers um, out there for airbrushes. For example, Stino Res uh, is another uh, airbrush uh, based primer. There are a whole bunch of other companies out there producing this stuff, uh, but to, in this example here, we'll be looking at Vallejo's as this seems to be a fairly common one. And today we'll be looking at the black. The black as it tends to be the one that a lot of people will tend to use for a lot of their models. And for some reason, gives a lot of people a lot of troubles. Now, when the primer seems a little thick and chunky, uh, use Vallejo's uh, airbrush thinner to thin it down just a little bit. It can be thinned down. You can use water as well, but uh, you're better off using the um, the airbrush thinner to thin the, the color out just a little bit. Uh, it's okay if the primer, it does uh, go on uh, a little bit thinner because you can build it up just a little bit. But the main purpose of the primer is that you want uh, a surface for the model, for paint to adhere to onto the model. It's not really there to provide uh, color or anything like that it's just it's just there to provide surface and with black primers uh, the tendency is to over prime a lot of times on a model you, when you are dealing with plastic or metal the tendency is you end up spraying on this primer until you basically you see nothing of the um, the model material underneath so for example if it's plastic you see that light gray if it's metal you see the shining metal shining through it and people tend to spray on until it's you know you can't see any of that and that's not entirely necessary because again the primer is only there to provide surface for the paint to adhere to and so again um, not entirely necessary to you know completely just you know cover the model in a primer so with that said let's have a look at a example here I've got this little uh, terminator here plastic terminator and we are going to give him a quick little coat of uh, surface primer and you'll see uh, basically how I kind of quickly go about priming these models now a lot of people will prime models differently um, there is no really right or wrong way it's really just up, up to you and your general experience on how much to lay down because again when you have models like this and they have like little small surface details and you know like they got the embossing and things like that you really do not want to lay too much primer down because again you're going to obscure all those little details and that's one of the big dangers of over priming because primer tends to have a, a bit of a thicker body to it when it dries uh, on a model surface uh, rather than uh, a regular paint which can you know sit on top almost like an ink an airbrush paint can sit almost like an ink and just be like have like almost no surface uh, thickness whereas a primer will go on thick and it'll stay thick and that's really um, what you do not want it to happen but yeah we'll take a look at this guy here now most of the time when I am putting on my primers I am using a Badger Patriot 105 this is a fairly uh, straightforward utility type uh, airbrush uh, it's got a 0.5 needle I believe and it's got a really nice cup uh, size for doing, you know, large jobs. Uh, if you've got like a whole bunch of uh, models to be doing anything like that. Uh, if you're going to be priming models, obviously you want to have a large cup so that you can handle, you know, doing four, uh, five, 10, 20 models at once. And again, but for me personally, I only go for go about five models. Uh, that's just my personal um, experience. And... Even with these surface primers here, always make sure you give these things a really, really good shake before you use them. So after you've given it a really, really good shake, uh, I tend to not use all that much. If I'm going to be spraying, you know, even five to 10 models, I usually don't use that much in the well. Uh, just because if there's too much sitting in the well, 
then you run the risk of paint drying along the edge. And when the paint dries along the edge, and then sometimes it can fall off and fall into it, and then you end up with a clog. And so that's why I tend to not use, so I already kind of, already trying to throw a little clogs in there. That's why I try, I try not to use too much. And see, for even just one model there, that's already too much paint there, but that's all right. Spraying it around uh, 20 PSI. Make sure the air is flowing nicely here. And again, when you are priming, I often work, but I have something to hold the model by, and I work the, the brush up and down the model surface and turning it as well. Often with this hand, I will usually wear a glove or something like that. It really doesn't take that long to prime a model, especially with the airbrush. And then basically I spray it just once, maybe from the top, and then come at, uh, at the under angle and try and catch some of this under stuff. The underside. Again, being mindful not to lay too much down. And that's pretty much it. You can see the model has just a little bit of slickness where it just got a little bit heavy, but otherwise there's really not a whole lot of paint on that surface. Again, I, I do prefer this uh, paint over a lot of other primers or even just like regular kind of spray primers uh, because again, it gives me a certain level of control, especially when you're airbrushing. And of course, you know, even when you're priming, you still gotta worry about getting dry tip or anything like that. So, and another quick example here we'll look at is a metal model. And so with this other model here, you can see we've got a uh, pewter uh, witch doctor from the Hordes uh, game. And again, same thing as before, I work brush up and down. I even have my cap on this time. You don't really need your cap on. Still got plenty of primer in here from doing the Terminator. And again, you know, you ease the, the trigger. And just like when you're airbrushing with other, uh, with other paints as well, I often start the airflow away from the model and then bring it to the model, even when I'm priming as well. So here we're just trying to get into the underside, nooks and crannies. And as I mentioned before, the, the tendency is to over prime when you have, when you're using like a color primer like this, just because you know, you see that, that metal in some areas and stuff like that, but rest assured, you know, there's not any, um, the paint will still reside, like still go onto the model, even in those areas. But if you really, really have to get some primer in that area, you go just work your, uh, work your paint very easily. You know, draw the, oh, got dry tip going. And just work the hammer just back, just a little bit, your trigger back just a little bit. And a, li a little bit of uh, primer flow through. And again, if you're working with a thinned out primer, even easier to get into those little nooks and crannies with the airbrush, because you know, you're not letting very much paint flow through. You see? Again, not every little space here has is covered in primer, but he is pretty generally pri um, you know, primed up here. And you can still see some silver there, and I'm fine with that. Uh, every little you know, spot does not have to have black right in it. it if I was simply laying out, you know, just too much, because you can 
So you can build the, the primer up slowly like that and across the model surface. Or you can come in and really kind of pound it on. And that's the way you're gonna end up clogging up your model. It's just hitting it with just too much primer like that and you end up hitting the surface and you get spider legs and you just get all sorts of awfulness. You always wanna just build the color up with the primer. And oftentimes when you're just working the model back and forth and just working it around, once from the top, get the underside, and you're pretty much done. But that's it. That's priming with the airbrush using black primer. Um, it's as easy as that. Just be key things to remember is just don't over prime. And, you know, primer is not meant to be just the color underneath your model. You're still going to be laying a base coat of color on there, even black on top of black. And so, again, you know, just... It's just there to provide a surface for the paint to get a hold of. But that's it. It's as easy as that. We've got even more painting tutorials in the Silver Mini Wargaming Vault. You can watch another one today about how I use the gemstone technicals to uh, uh, change the colors on the Necron uh, rods. Just click the link in the video description below and watch it right now. If you don't have a Mini Wargaming Vault membership, just click the link and Sign up for a free seven day trial. Make sure that you get the silver membership so you can access the painting tutorials and you'll get instant access to over a thousand painting tutorials already in the vault. And so thank you for watching. Happy Wargaming.